Hi there, I'm Lee, welcome to iMine Blocks. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my upgrading of my Burstcoin mining hardware. So I've uh, been waiting for a whole bunch of different hardware to arrive and um, it's arrived today. So I'm gonna be sharing the whole process of actually adding this to my existing Burstcoin um, mining setup and I'm taking you through the whole sort of uh, process. So the hardware that I've got, I've picked up four eight terabytes of these uh, Lacey USB free external hard drives. So I picked these or cho chose these um, primarily for two reasons. One is they had um, a very good price ratio per terabyte. So these are eight terabyte hard drives and I paid 213 pounds. Uh, that roughly works out to 26 pounds per terabyte. So that's a really good price ratio. Uh, the second main reason that I purchased these as well is because they are fast, at least in the specs uh, point of view. So they're 7200 RPM drives, which is the same as my Toshiba drives. And um, so that's what I was looking for. A lot of the other Seagate uh, drives and the Western Digital drives, they tend to be uh, 5400 or 5200 RPM drives. And I was looking for something that had the performance, but also at the same time was um, at a good price. So these uh, was on offer. There was four of them available and I actually purchased um, all four of them. Um, so. I've not actually tested them yet. I don't really know what the performance characteristics are going to be like, but I'm hoping that they're going to be good. Um, so I'll be sharing that with you um, as we go through this video. So that's the drives that I'm going to be using. Um, I've also picked up another seven port uh, USB hub, which is this one made by Orico. Um, I've already had a few of these. I've got two here. I've already got one, one or two at home as well. Um, they're really good hubs. Um, basically, they're super reliable you don't get any sort of a connection issues with them or they don't drop out um, so I just like to use these ones and they cost a little bit more than some of the other hubs but um, I just find that they they work really well for me so I've got another one of those uh, which is going to be I'm going to sort of um, daisy chain it unless I get any sort of um, issues with that it's also a mains powered hub as well so it does have a power adapter um, included so that's the hub I'm going to be using and then in this brown box here which is not really very much to, to look at it is just a uh, giant plug extension type tower. So it has 10 plugs and hopefully I can fit the um, external power adapters into that without them getting jammed against each other because that's a bit of a problem when you're doing these um, big sort of uh, rig builds uh, using external hard drives. So that's kind of the hardware that I'm going to be using. And like I say, I'm going to be adding it onto my existing hardware. So we're going to go for it um, stage by stage. The first thing I'm actually going to do is these uh, drives are designed for uh, Mac. Um, I'm not foreseeing any particular problems. It should just be a case of, um, you know, partition and reformat, and they should be fine and good to use. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test one first before I kind of go on to the next part of it. Um, if it goes through testing fine, then it'll be a case of uh, plotting these drives to burst coin, um, obviously adding them to the actual rest of the hardware. So I'll be taking you through each part piece by piece and capturing it and sharing it with you. Um, of course, if I have any problems, I'll share that with you guys um, as well. So that's the hardware. Let's move on to the uh, next part. Okay, so I've just unboxed the first Lacey 8 terabyte external hard drive. And this is it here. So it's got a really nice brushed aluminium finish. It's also the Porsche design version. So apparently they've done a collaboration back a few years ago, and this is kind of what they come up with. The, one of the things that you've really noticed about this drive is actually it weighs a ton. It probably weighs about double my other drives, and that's because it's got this quite uh, chunky piece of aluminium on it. So I think that's going to help also with the cooling of the drive, so that should be useful. Uh, this is a just a hard drive activity light, I believe, and it comes up in white, uh, black finish around the sides. On the, this will actually be the rear. You've got a power button, which is actually quite useful. A USB free connector, a power connector. On the underside, uh, four rubber feet, and you've also got this kind of a cutout grill, which obviously will also aid in uh, keeping the actual drive cool itself. So a really nice looking uh, piece of kit, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, using it. Obviously, it just comes with a USB free cable and also universal uh, power connector. It's the one where you have the uh, multi plug type design. So obviously, I'm in the UK, so we just use the three pin plug there. So that's the drive, I'm going to plug it in and uh, test it now. Okay, so sorry about the actual camera motion. So if we look down the actual back of the drives, you can see the power connectors and the USB connectors there. So we've got the USB hub at the back. At the moment I'm not using any external power supply, it's just USB to USB. 
So that's one hub into the other, and then you've got the four drive connectors um, out of there. I'll just show you the actual power underneath. So it's a bit of a mess, I'm not too sure how well you can see, but we've just got the actual main power block, and then we've got four adapters in there. Okay, so let's continue on. Uh, what I'm actually doing here, um, I'm on the main work one machine, but I'm actually going to be editing the machine that is literally right next to me. But what I do, what I thought I would do is actually I catch the screen so you can see exactly what I'm doing um, as I go through it, uh, rather than recording it with the camera and it just doesn't uh, look good. Not a very good display, you can't really see clearly. So I'm actually working on working through, which is the one that next to me. All the drives and everything are installed. Um, so I'll just show you what they look like. So we've got all the drives. The partition and formatting was okay. In the end, I used the the Windows tool to uh, partition and format the remaining drives. The Lacy tool kept on crashing, um, so then I had to go into the uh, disk management, online the drives, and then sort of um, do it manually. But here are four drives, so they're basically all ready to go, all ready for burst coin uh, plotting. So now I'm going to go through the actual uh, plotting process. So you should see there that basically for each pot file it adds on 30 million, 500,000 <coughs> nonces. So we've got yeah, 274, 30, 33 and 36. So that all looks about right, quite happy with that. So this is going to be our plot file generation file. So I'm just going to give this a new name. Start plots multi and today's date, which is the 10th of 417. Uh, and it needs to be, as soon as, yeah, it does need to be a batch file, not a text file. Okay, so we're just about ready to start this up. Let's actually close it down. So that's a new one there. Uh, by the way, I've got this uh, device configuration. I'll just give you a quick look at that. So it's going to use device zero, and these are the other settings. Um, I've used these settings before, and they just work. So I'm just going to stick with these um, again, and we'll see how we get along. So let's start up the actual plotter, and then it's going to take basically an entire day from that point onwards. So let's fire that up. So the device that it's going to be using for our plotting is the 7950. Um, I'm just seeing it only looks like it's only showing the very first sequence of plots, not the second ones. I'm pretty sure it used to read out like a report for all of the drives. So I'm just going to go back and double check that. Um, but I will uh, fine tune that and then I'll give you an update once the actual plotting has been completed. Okay, so slight change of plans. Originally I was going to use the uh, direct plotter to plot multiple drives all at the same time. Um, but for some reason that's not working. I don't know if it's because I'm using direct mode and previously I used buffer mode. That could be one reason. Um, but it's just not working. So what I've decided to do is plot one drive on this machine and one of the other drives on my other machine over there. I think I'm going to take one of the drives home as well and get it plotted so I can sort of speed through this process as quick as possible. Um, typically it does take about a day to plot the drives um, so anything that I can do to kind of get more drives pl plotted at the same time is uh, beneficial so that's what I'm working on and um, we'll proceed on from here. Okay, so it's now actually Wednesday, so it's been uh, 10 days since I first started making this video. It's been quite a long journey. Uh, so I'll just tell you a few of the actual problems that I run into during the actual process of uh, plotting my hard drives. So previously, up until this point, I always used 5 terabyte hard drives, and I was uh, pretty experienced with them. Um, knew what my plot sizes, stagger sizes, everything like that was, and also how long it would take to uh, generate those plots and get everything set up. Using these new drives, the 8 terabyte drives, there was a bit of a learning curve um, to work out uh, the best um, kind of formulation or, or configuration really to get the, the best out of the actual drives. So for that first sort of week um, I decided to plot in direct uh, plotting mode uh, using the GPU plotter. And what actually happened was in the first sort of two to three days um, the drives got 99% plotted and then they just sort of um, stopped at 99%. So I kind of gave it a day 
and not much changed. Gave it another day, not much changed. And then it kind of come around the Saturday and I realized that basically these drives were not gonna complete for some reason or another. Um, what actually happened was when I looked into it, the actual plot size that I chose, the nonces, was um, a little bit too high. So effectively the drives got to like 99% and they couldn't actually uh, complete the actual plot file. So if you have eight terabyte drives, um, the plot size that you most likely want to use is 30 million 400,000 so that's what I'm currently using um, on these drives. I've actually used 30 million 300,000 but I've come up 50 gigabytes short on one of the drives. Um, on some of the other drives I used um, 29 million 980,000 uh, just to see whether it would fit and it does um, but they come up at 150 gigabytes short on each drive so I've really got to replot the drives but at the moment I've just kind of got everything up and running and what I'll do is I'll do some tweaking and configuration afterwards to get the very best performance out of each one of these drives but just to make you aware of um, what I needed to do to get them up and running they are now up and running um, the other thing to mention as well is um, I decided to uh, replot them all in buffer mode um, so they need to be really redone and re-optimized but really it's just kind of a, to get them up and running at least in some kind of a working configuration and I'll go back and I'll tweak them one by one um, over time so this is how they look um, they look pretty good I also changed the actual format I laid them down flat I did have them stacked up four high uh, as a brick but the two bottom ones seem to get particularly hot for the, on the front they've got like an aluminium casing and that was almost so hot that it actually would burn your hand um, so I decided to separate them out a little bit just to give them a bit of extra air movement around them. And uh, that's something that I'll also sort of tweak in the future. The other thing I was concerned with with these drives is they've only got rubber pads on the actual bottom of the drives. Um, you can't, you probably could sort of stand them up sideways, but there's no rubber padding. That's something that I might adjust. Um, so what I didn't want is like a big towel stacked up and then with the vibration for each one of the drives, kind of one affecting the other. So I decided to separate them out a little bit um, for that reason. And so what I'll do now is I'll just jump on the actual uh, machine behind me. I'll just show you a quick uh, screen capture of um, J Miner running um, across all these drives, um, just so you can kind of see what it looks like from a software point of view. Okay, so I've just logged on to the machine next to me using a uh, TeamViewer, so I'm just so I can show you the actual uh, screen capture, a little bit um, sharper screen resolution. So the machine next to me is a Windows 8 machine, and it's one that I use for uh, burst coin mining, also a little bit of GPU mining and CPU mining as well. So if I log into the uh, startup folder, we can go into the uh, Jminer setup. So I'll just show you first the actual, the current sort of drive configuration. Because it looks um, pretty cool, there's a lot going on there. So in this machine next to me, which is worker free, there's currently uh, 24 drives listed. Although to be fair, two of them are removable drives, they don't really count. Uh, actually four of them are removable drives and don't count. So anyway, at the bottom we've got these are the lacy drives. So you can see there's a bit of free space on each of them. That's what I said because of the actual plots. This was the last one that I plotted, um, but really there's still a bit of tweaking to do to get the maximum um, amount of um, capacity from the actual drive itself. And that's really just a case of rewriting the drive with the correct number of nonces. And that would be perfect. Um, so there are four new drives. And in the actual, so the um, the miner that I use for Burstcoin is the J miner, which is a CPU, sorry, a GPU uh, miner for Burstcoin. Um, I just use the GPU features of the uh, CPU um, and leave the other two GPUs that are in there just for a fear of mining. Uh, just to show you my configuration. So just at the top, you can see um, all of the actual plots. So this is the plot paths and this is all the actual plots in there. So you can see some of them I've got listed as optimized plots and these new ones which is uh, Y, W, X and Z. They're the lacy drives and they sort of basically need a little bit of um, tweaking to get the best um, out of those. But just to show you what that um, sort of um, paths file looks like. Um, so now I'm going to run the actual J miner and you can just see the actual process starting up. So you can see at the top there, I'm using device 2, which is the built-in GPU on my C CPU. It's an integrated one. Then we go further down, you can see the J minus sort of firing up. And you can see here we've got uh, the capacity, which is 900 and, sorry, 99,632 gigabytes. So basically uh, just under 100 terabytes. Um, what I need to do is, uh, rewrite those plot files and then I'll be up over 100 terabytes. Um, I have, in terms of actual raw capacity the, on the actual external drives, there are 100 terabytes in total. 
Um, there's also a four terabyte drive in internal and a five terabyte drive internal as well. So in uh, raw capacity, there should be 109 terabytes. Um, once it's all plotted, it'll probably be um, yeah, just around about 100. So that's obviously going to start up and uh, run like it normally does. Uh, prior to adding these new lazy drives, there was um, the scan times like 37 seconds. Um, now it's around uh, 58 seconds. So I think I can also reduce that as well if I re-plot these uh, lazy drives and also use optimized plots at the right size. And I think we'll still probably be around about 45 seconds, something like that, to get the whole um, 100 terabytes um, plotted and running. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching. I know it's been a bit of a mix mash and a bit of a long one. Uh, it's been a long process to kind of just even get this video uh, out to you guys, but hopefully you've enjoyed watching and learned something, and um, hopefully it makes your kind of plotting experiences a little bit easier. Um, so if you have liked it, uh, please give it a like. If you like this type of video, then please be sure to subscribe. Um, I make videos like this on a, uh, on a regular basis. Um, also, if you're interested in what drives I use, um, please check out the links in the video description. Um, I'll put everything that you need down there to sort of um, you know, get set up, uh, mining if that's something that you want to do yourself. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.